Hey guys, uh, before you continue watching, I discovered that pop more. Hey, the nine pin group has been accounted. So just want to take you through before you continue watching. So you see that this is the annual report. There's an interest in joint ventures, pop more investment limited. It holds this commercial property located at 9 Penang Road, Singapore. And if you turn it around, uh, you see that here, the revenue, the expense. So it has started to kick in already. And if you look down here, it has yet to d contribute anything. Because this is 74557, which later you see that it, I wrote the number here. So, part more has been, uh, is starting to be accounted. Continue to watch the remaining video. Today's twenty ninth April or thirtieth April. But anyway, uh, it's way early in the morning. I'm not sure what the video title is gonna be, but it just happened that. The annual report came in. Right now, I've been piling more on the Capital Com uh, Trust uh, rather than Suntech read. Uh, predominantly, uh, the, the other read gets more attention because uh, there's a much more uh, active sponsor that can inject buildings in. One of the key points that I want to bring across in this video is that uh, drill in deep. And you probably know that when the contributions of certain uh, ventures or buildings that has not been encountered fully into the books, it can present an opportunity uh, to buy before it becomes totally visible to the whole stock market. This really required my time to go in, uh, just focus on these two reads and go in deep. That's my style. Let's head straight in. Ignore the envelope, but then there are a lot of crosses Initially, it started off as a example to uh, drill in more into the joint ventures, right? So, of course, uh, Suntech Re has uh, one third interest in uh, One Raffles Key, one third interest in MBFC, 50% in Southgate, one third in Penang Road. Now, I'm recalling why am I writing all these things, but you just take note distributions. As when, as when it comes to my mind, then I'll just take note. Then the things that I wanted to find out Apart from the joint ventures, what does it wholly own? Meaning that when it is wholly owned, it is accounted into the main books But if it's taken from a joint venture, right? So you take that portion and you put it in That's the part that they get the income from joint associates or joint ventures Each week is structured differently And sorry, I cannot generalize because uh, I'll be doing, doing the community a uh, disservice But you can follow the videos that I've created in the playlist as a reference okay then you do your homework then you share with me okay so that we both upgrade our knowledge together certain things like Suntech is holding on Suntech Singapore which is a convention center then they have uh, Australia 177 Pacific Highway uh, 55 Curie Street um, 50% yeah remember it's 50% uh, interest in this 477 older fleet and right now it's under development then one thing that is that I think note is that uh, about the commercial tenant retention rate. So if you need to know more about the tenant retention rate, uh, you can go back to the YouTube channel, go and take a look at it. For commercial, the tenant retention rate is at 72%, then at most it's at 69%. So this kind of two tenant uh, retention rate uh, rate rates, right? Uh, it was just introduced into the annual report. Okay, what I want to do is to identify the gross profit margins of the whole building you discover that eh? Suntech 74.1 but Suntech uh, here's, a, here's the commercial type here's the M is the more C is the commercial then you see that the more is at 69 6.9 so that's why if I'm a business owner would you want a property that has a higher gross profit margin naturally I would want so that let, uh, that's also one of the factors that led to me prioritizing commercial over more. Oh, but I won't generalize this trend. You have to look at each read. Then if 
certain more REITs are able to generate more gross profit than your commercial, then there could be something worth looking at that more REIT. Actually, I want to implore the community, uh, go in deep. It may take some time, but at least you now know that, oh, if you were to do a comparison between any REITs, you know it at the tips of your fingers, right? You see that the 177 Pacific Highway, this is commercial. This is a commercial. Uh, and down here, I was just ensuring that the, its contributions has already been uh, accounted in the books. But then there was this part, the 9 Penang Road, which is a one-third joint venture. According to the report, right, the annual report, it says that it really TOP on October 2019. So as of this point, there should be at least a few months contribution. But then I could not find it anywhere in the annual report. So email your IR. I, so I emailed my, my IR to find out hey, what's happening to that building since it has been TOP in October 2009. So let's say I give them an additional three months, right? A three months to uh, work in that, to get everything up for the tenant to move in. So October, November, December. So I only start counting in January, February, March, April. So that's basically giving a buffer of three months. There's already a four months contribution, but I still don't see that contribution being reflected in the uh, annual report. So I will email the IR. Uh, I've emailed, but yet to get, receive a reply. So look forward to that reply from uh, their team member, Melissa. Oh, uh, since the 477 older fleet is still, it's going to TOP in middle 2020, right? Uh, yep, the contributions will only come from this property will only come in later. And recently they completed this 21 Harry Street, which was totally, I think it was off my radar. Yeah, it was com completely off my radar. And the acquisition was completed on 6 April. So what I needed to bring your attention is to these two properties. Uh, 21 Harris is just completed acquisition, right? It means that the subsequent contributions from this building will only start to kick in in the, the second quarter of the financial year. They used, may start to see additional numbers or the revenue increasing and the distributions. Hopefully, it can be you can be uh, you equitative. It adds on to the distributions that you receive as a unit holder. So the question right now is that on today, which I think it's either 29 or 30th of April, I don't really remember the date. Are you buying the REIT right now for its current situation? Or are you buying the REIT for the future earnings? So this is one thing that uh, I will take note when I want to buy a REIT. Because while I'm being mindful of the present right now, I also need to take note, okay, what is the potential of this REIT that's going to contribute? So I know I still got two more buildings on the pipeline where the contributions are not yet accounted in the books. What assumption should I make of the potential is that, okay, let's assume that uh, if you're conservative, let's assume that there's no contribution. What you're buying right now is based for the current situation. Then these two contributions right, from these two buildings will be an added bonus. So when you buy your REITs at whatever price, you need to be mindful. Are you buying it for the current present situation or are you going to buy it for the future potential? Take note, I said future potential, not future guaranteed outcomes. This is what I mean by sometimes when you go in deep, you understand that when the books or when the annual report doesn't account for the contributions of buildings that have been uh, just TOP or completed acquisition, the future potential is there. Here, here was the part that was kind of like fuzzy. So I saw that there was an income of 115893. Then it was, it was from all these ventures. But when then I start breaking it down, I was like, okay, can uh, what does this uh, private company own? What entity? So uh, sometimes even after investing for so many years, right? Now it really is a good time to reflect. Okay. How do I get to, know, get to know these numbers so that in the next EGM, it's time to ask the management. It's always a reiteration process. Even I make mistakes, even there are things that I do not know. This is a whole journey to understand more uh, about my own dream. There isn't really like a guaranteed answer here, but 
this is what I do when I receive the annual reports. More details are in the description below. If you need a checklist, uh, there's, I'll just put the keyword down there, the instructions to download it. The key thing is it documents the various steps that I've been uh, using in my own REITS framework so that you can uh, benefit from it too. Uh, lastly, practice independent thinking. So uh, in this COVID-19-2020, COVID-19-2020, uh, rest well, stay healthy and I'll see you guys in the next video.